Hello and welcome back to another episode of Ozpol Explained. I'm your average height host, David, and I'm here to teach you everything you need to know about how the Australian political system works. This is the fifth and final part of my introduction to the Basics of Government series. You did it, you got to the end. This may be the last thing you need to do for your homework assignment, I don't know, but Let's dive right into it. In this episode, I'll be talking about the Prime Minister, as well as a general guide to the various different political parties so you can help figure out who you want to vote for. Who is the Prime Minister? The Prime Minister is the head of the federal government. They are the leader of the political party that the Governor General has chosen to form government. Normally, the choice is pretty simple. Whoever has the majority of seats in the House of Representatives. Simple, right? Mmm, eh. Well, almost every single election has resulted in a clear winner, and that winner forms government. So it's pretty standard to think of the Prime Minister as the majority party leader. But plot twist, sometimes politics is a little bit more complicated than that. Sometimes there's a thing called a minority government. This is where a party doesn't have more than 50% of the seats, so needs to band together with other minor parties and independence to become a majority. Sometimes they just can't do that and they have to govern without the reliable ability to pass legislation because they don't have the numbers. This is what happened between 1901 and 1910. There were three major parties and so none of them even got close to half the seats. We changed who was prime minister quite a lot back then, but for different reasons than we do now. The Prime Minister is a member of a party and is chosen from that party. The position is not like a president with extra executive powers and ability to just be like, this is law. Australia does not have a president. Well, we have the President of the Senate, but that's not the same thing. You're probably familiar with the US president, which has their own separate election and doesn't sit in the House of Representatives. That doesn't happen here, though we will get a president if we become a republic. So the position of prime minister is dependent on support from the party, who can collectively remove a person and choose a new leader, which they tend to do every year or so to keep the position fresh and to prevent the prime minister from growing moldy, as is my understanding. I mean, why else have we changed prime ministers several times in the past 10 years? People wanting power? Bad polls? Eh, pff, no, it's because the Prime Minister is like a root vegetable. A Prime Minister goes to an election the same time as everyone else and has to win their own electorate. It's therefore theoretically possible for a party to win government, but their leader loses their own seat, thus forcing the party to choose a new leader and thus a new Prime Minister. Though, as of this video, the only time a sitting Prime Minister has lost their seat at an election is John Howard in 2007 and Stanley Bruce in 1929, both of whose parties also lost the election. Generally, the Prime Minister is taken from a very safe seat, so it's very unlikely to lose that. The Prime Minister has a few responsibilities. They recommend someone to the Queen to become Governor General. They appoint members to be part of the Cabinet, which is a collective of politicians who have ministerial positions. The Minister for Defence, Minister for Health, and so on. Together they coordinate and implement government policy. The Prime Minister is also a representative of Australia and so goes to official functions in that capacity. So you may hear that the Prime Minister has left the country to go to the G20, which is an international forum where multiple countries come together to discuss international financial stability. Sounds super boring and I would much rather just stay inside, which is why I don't want to be Prime Minister. But if that sounds cool to you and you want to talk about numbers and stuff with world leaders, go aspire to it. Become part of a political party and work your way up. While the prime minister is out of the country or ill, another person can be chosen to be the acting prime minister. This doesn't need to be the deputy of the party and is often chosen from a senior member of parliament. Since 1941, the Prime Minister has usually been either from the Liberal Party or the Labour Party. This is because those are the two largest parties that form government. The exception of this is there are a few times where the Prime Minister was briefly a member of the Country Party. I'll get into that in a moment. 
That's right. Give you a, a little bit of a cliffhanger so you watch the rest of the video. There are plenty of other political parties, so let's get into that right now. What are the political parties? The political spectrum covers a wide range of views and ideas, and we generally categorize them as ranging from right wing to center to left wing, and we further divide them into economic and social. So for example, social left wing ideas would be protecting LGBTQIA plus rights, and economic right wing would be like decreasing taxes and less government spending on social programs. There's also libertarians, which are like a mix of left and right wing ideas, but based around the idea of minimal government. That could mean things like getting rid of restrictions on speech, like anti-discrimination laws or legalizing drugs or removing restrictions on gun ownership. There's all sorts of different ideas. We have political parties in Australia that cover all over the spectrum. So let's start with the major parties. The Liberal Party is a centre-right party, which forms government in a coalition with the Nationals, who are also centre-right. The leader of the Nationals is the Deputy Prime Minister, while the Liberals are in power. The two have been linked even when the Nationals were called the Country Party, and as such, leaders of the Country Party have briefly been Prime Ministers, like John McEwen, who was Prime Minister for 22 days after Harold Holt died. And then they got John Gorton for the Liberal Party. The Liberals focus more on city electorates, and the Nationals focus on country electorates. There's been a coalition of Conservative parties since the 20s, back before there was the Liberals or the Nationals. In addition, the Queensland branch has merged, so they're the Liberal National Party. Just all in one. Like, they grab two bits of Play-Doh and they just, there we go. Saves time. Plus, in the Northern Territory, there's the Country Liberal Party. They all work together as part of the coalition, except for in WA, where the Nationals are not part of it. The key thing is, though, that if you hear the coalition, they're probably talking about the centre-right parties. Labour is the other major party and has been around since day one. It's been around since before Federation. They have to compete in every seat, as opposed to the Liberal Party, they are centre-left. So they have more socially and economically progressive policies than the Liberal Party in some areas. Many people in the comments will be really mad the moment that you assign a label to any political party. Uh, they're like, uh, right now, someone is aggressively typing a message that Labour is actually super right wing, or that the Liberals are actually not conservative and ignore them, just ignore them. It's important to know that politics isn't just dots on a line, but a Venn diagram. There are multiple things that Liberals and Labour agree on, and things that they're completely opposed on. This means that there are some issues that people see absolutely no difference between the Liberal and Labour party on, and so they label them as basically the same. This is incorrect, but if the kinds of issues that you care about and swing your vote are in the middle of that Venn diagram, then functionally it doesn't matter to you and you'll want to vote for someone else. To others, there are key issues that are supported by only one of the major parties, and so they're very passionate about making sure that one of those parties wins. And within those political parties, there's also a range of ideas, and not everyone agrees. It's really important to understand that political parties are made of people, and people vary a lot. So they create factions. While I say Labour is centre-left, there are factions that are labelled the right faction and the left faction. The right faction is more likely to have a crossover with the Liberal Party in ideas. The Liberal Party has its own factions, from the more right-wing side to the more moderate side. So, for example, Tony Abbott and Malcolm Turnbull are both recent leaders of the Liberal Party, and their views on marriage equality and climate change are completely different. Tony Abbott has said that climate change isn't real, and marriage equality would undermine traditional values. Abbott was considered part of the right faction, whereas Turnbull was labelled as a moderate. Perhaps he was too moderate for most of the party, leading to his replacement by the more conservative Scott Morrison. So as you can see, parties are not singular solid things, but shaped by the people in them, and their focus can shift over time. 
Labour has a national conference every three years, for example, where they decide their party policy. And so their stance on certain issues shifts gradually over time. There are several other parties as well. The largest minor party is the Greens, which is a left-wing party. They're generally the third largest voting bloc in Australian parliaments around the country, both federally and on a state level. They also have their own Venn diagram with Labour, where some of the ideas overlap, like an importance of public housing, but have more environmentally and socially progressive policies. On the other side of the spectrum is One Nation, who is right-wing. They focus a lot on anti-immigration. They're smaller than the Greens, but occasionally get a seat or two, depending on the state. They also have a little crossover with the Liberals and the Nationals, but have more conservative stances on a range of issues. There's also the Centre Alliance, which you guessed it, by the name, is a centre party. So has ideas that Labour likes, that Liberals like, but it's a separate party. As of this video, federally, there's also the Catter Party, which is named after Bob Catter, the long-serving conservative independent from Queensland. And there's also the Lambie Network, similarly named after Jackie Lambie, whose uh, previous experiences in the military has given her a focus on the armed forces and veterans' rights. Look, these are these complex people with lots of different ideas, so that's just an oversimplification. Plus, there's also a bunch of independents who aren't part of any party. And together, anything that isn't part of the major parties is the crossbench. If Labour and the Coalition disagree on a bill, it can be down to members of the crossbench to side with one of the major parties to either block a bill or make it pass. There are a lot of parties, like a lot. <laughs> so you can find a list of registered parties on the AEC website because the AEC, like I love to say, is your friend. Someone is guaranteed to comment down below that I did not mention party X or party Y. They're, like I said, a lot. And some of these parties are ones that would contest a lot of elections and you may have heard of them, but as of this video, don't have any seats, like the Australian Christians Party. Or there are parties that only have a seat in one state, like the Liberal Democrats, a right-wing libertarian party. They have, as of this video, two seats in the Victorian Parliament and used to have a seat in the Federal Parliament for a few years. Depending on where you live, there could be the Shooters, Fishers, Farmers Party, which is a country party that competes with the Nationals. You might also have the Reason Party, which is a left-wing libertarian party. There's the Flux Party that doesn't have any specific party policies other than everything should be put up to a public vote by a digital direct democracy. So, who to vote for? Who you vote for is entirely up to you. I could give you a list of specific party policies, but policies are subject to change over time. Parties are made up of people and people change, as well as the membership of those parties. And so do societal attitudes towards different ideas. You could join a political party that is mostly like what you like and be a voice that helps include or change a policy within that party. Or you could join them and be a voice for maintaining the status quo if you feel like it's mostly agreeable with you, but it's slipping in a direction that you don't like. It's entirely up to you. But I have three pieces of practical advice. The first is to go to theyvoteforyou.org.au. There you type in the name of a federal politician you'd like to learn more about. It will list a bunch of different topics that they've voted for or against and you can use that to compare with politicians from other parties to see how they voted. That way you can look at the topics and decide if you disagree or agree with those parties. Another piece of advice, use the ABC Vote Compass. It is updated every federal election, but you should still be able to do one from the previous election. It's a quiz that asks your opinion on different political topics and then shows you how you align with four different political parties. Greens, Labour, Liberal, and One Nation. So basically from left to right, the results are provided on a graph made of four squares. The top is labeled social progressive, the bottom is social conservative, the right is economic right, and the left is economic left. Pretty simple. It'll show you where on that scale those four different parties land. So, you know, you've got One Nation down in the economic and social right, you've got the Greens up in the corner in the social and progressive left, and then you've got Labour and Liberal closer to the centre. 
it'll show you how you relate on that scale to those four different parties and also how you relate to the left slash right wing political spectrum. You may be pretty spot on or you may be halfway between two parties. It's not every party, but if you're unsure where to start, it'll give you a pretty good idea of your current values and how they relate to the most common political parties. And third and finally, I encourage you to look up the policy pages of different political parties. The two previous bits of advice are mostly helpful for federal politics, but there are a lot of parties that only show up in state elections. So a little bit of research can help you feel a lot more confident when you go to the ballot to cast your vote. A bit of research and you'll learn what minor parties want to limit immigration, what parties want to decriminalize drugs, or which ones are just really passionate about investing in public transport. And if you haven't already, check out the previous episode on the difference between federal, state, and local government so you have a better idea of what responsibilities fall on the federal government and what fall on the state. You may vote on different parties based on state and federal because of those different responsibilities. I believe in you, you can do this. Thank you so much for watching, a genuine thank you for wanting to learn. That's it, that's the video. If you would like, share this with other people, subscribe to learn more. I have more in-depth episodes all about everything to do with Australian politics. You can also support me on Patreon if you'd like. I am incredibly grateful for those who do. Shout out to those people. And of course, always comment down below what you would like to learn about next. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.